Welcome to W O Five O Women Over Fifty Embody Wisdom and Wellness. I'm Corinne, and I'm here with my BFF Eddie, and we today talked about unstucking yourself. Ooh, is a great topic too. Wow, we dug deep and. Yes, one of my biggest challenges, well, probably in my life too, you know, to think about things differently, look at things differently, and also with my clients to help them get unstuck, it's probably the biggest challenge as a life coach that I have. And Mm -hmm. so today we talked about um, how to unstuck yourself, where you can get stuck, how you can get stuck, and the importance of unstucking yourself as we age. I mean, it's great at any age, but it's, it's important as we get older for the brain. Yes, it is keeps things flowing and and we feel more alive when we're engaged in life and yeah healthy stuck healthy yeah and we're healthy. preventing we're preventing a lot of illnesses you know and a lot of um brain smog <laughs> <laughs> that's great all right so we hope you enjoy the episode as much as we enjoyed talking about it hi eddie hi ken how are you today I'm good. I'm good. Just been a little bit busy um, yeah. cooking all day, actually. I made that recipe again that I made at my sister's house, like um, I'm using my, using my keto sugars and all the, I came home to like six zucchinis that were the size of my upper leg bone. Wow. And so, um, I, and I use, only used one of them for this. I, I made z- chocolate zucchini cake and it's gluten-free and dairy-free because I wanted Jamina to be able to eat it. Excellent. And and it's the it's the best of bridge recipe, but the best of bridge of course has flour and it's not vegan because it has eggs in it, but it's like almond flour, coconut flour, and uh, and more eggs. And anyways, it's really it's really yummy. It looks good. And I made muffins. Yummy. I wish you. Would, oh yeah, you couldn't do the chocolate part. I'd leave the chocolate out for you. Yeah, yeah, I know. We all have these little little things, little sensitivities. But everything can be worked around, you know, there's, there's lots out there available. Mostly the last week, I've just been kind of reorganizing, getting back because I was three weeks in Canada, right? It's the Western Canada with my family. So it's been just yeah. like getting back in the groove, the garden and getting my house back in order and mm-hmm. all that stuff. How about you? No, I've had a, have, yeah, a good week since we last talked and my garden is doing better and my zucchini are not that big but they're getting there. And um, yeah, I had the grandkids today and we did a little walk about and we actually are um, learning piano together. Yeah. yeah, I know. I got a little keyboard that a friend gave me and, and the kids saw it and I said, okay, we're going to download an app. And we did. And we sat for like, oh my gosh, 30 minutes and she's six. And then the eight-year-old got interested in it. He he was like, he did hmm. wow because he like yeah some yeah. So so then you know me, I'm a guitar player, not a keyboard player. And then I I look at this simply piano, and we all learned where the different C's were on the scales. And next, you know, we're all playing. Yeah, that's amazing. So yeah. good for 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 kids because they their brains marry very malleable. So when they're that young, they learn things more easily. And yes. our brain, it's good to help keep it malleable to learn brand new mm-hmm. things. Whether it's like I like that's what I love. I love learning the new picking patterns on the guitar. And um, what else? Day they say dancing is good. Like learning new dance moves. Just mm-hmm. anyway, and and that kind of goes into our topic for today. Yes, it does. That we decided in is called unstucking yourself. Yes. And that Not works the other for me. word. <laughs> no, unstucking. So yeah, I just branched out to piano just to see and I'm loving it. So yeah, uh, it's you're never you're never too old. So you know, here I am, you know, in the last year, of my 50s going, I am going to play the piano, I'm going to learn this with the kids. And yeah, it's really good for the brain. And I say this to, to my patients all the time and friends learn something new, a language, you know, uh, read about history, you know, try different things that you never dreamed you'd ever dabble in. Don't get lazy. You know, we, again, like if we're in menopause, we pause and that's okay. And that pause is beautiful because that's the perfect time to unstuck yourself. Yeah. (laughs) Cause we get, I think as we, we can, you can see it over your life sort of when you, 
well, for in a style, for instance, that you like in clothing, you know, in your 20s, it's like it does kind of go out, not that you have to follow the style that's in fashion, but it's like we kind of get stuck in in things that work for us and that we like. I know for me, it was, um, well, it was yoga and meditation, really. It, w- it worked so well for me. I thought mm-hmm. that the whole world needed to do it and then it needed to do it the specific style of yoga that I taught and that I learned and the specific style of meditation. I was I became quite dogmatic in my early 30s about those specific styles. And and over the years, I'm, I've you know, softened, I hope, uh, a little bit, uh, quite a lot, I hope, and and know that there's many techniques out there, many styles of yoga, many styles of meditation, and it's like whatever works for you. And so, but the tendency is, as human beings, when we find something we, that really works for us, we stick to it, which is great, and unless you become very stuck, we come, we get stuck in our belief systems and our way of looking at things, in mm-hmm. our way of doing things, in what we like, because as we get older, we just want to do what we like, and, mm-hmm. and you got to shake it up. To yeah, we get stuck healthy. in... Well, we get stuck in self-criticism. We get stuck in, you know, trains of thought or whatever a certain belief system was. And then we, if we, you know, just do the opposite. One day, do the opposite. Just try that. Well, I'm doing, I'm brushing my teeth with my left hand right now because my right hand is still gimped because of my my fall. And Mm -hmm. so- I, I just, I'm like, I don't even fight it anymore because it really hurts to do what my right hand. So I'm like yeah. brushing my hair and with the left hand and it's hard, but I'm doing it. Well, your and your brain is, is, you know, calculating all that. And it's really funny because yesterday um, I went for a game of golf and, you know, golf is new to me too. So, um, you know, my honey, he loves golfing and um, he loves it not love loves it, but, you know, and we enjoy it, you know, going out and doing sports together. And so when I was um, being taught how to golf, I'm ambi, so I'm mostly right-handed, but I do a lot with my left. So I never really got into golfing because my drive, my swing, my every, the balls were going all over the place. I just could not get it. And he looks at me and he says, well, maybe you're supposed to golf left. Let's just rent some lefty golf clubs. Well, yep, I'm a left-handed golfer and I'm pretty dang good at it too. Uh Wow, so you just know yesterday. I know. So yesterday I went, wow. So the whole, you know, few hours we're playing, it was amazing. Beautiful sunset. The wind was blowing lightly. The the game was was gorgeous. It was seventy Fahrenheit, twenty four <laughs> Celsius, That's and it great. was it was great. And there was and no it, panic, no rush. And I, you know, I had to remember, right? You just go, oh, okay, Oop, rejig things. So it is unsticking. Yeah. Now, what about um, pickleball? You right or left handed for that? I'm both. I'm both. It drives wow. people crazy. Yep. I serve right. And then I am, my racket is in one or the other hand, depending on what direction the ball's coming at me. Wow. So I know. I know. You could be like a pickleball shark. You could do play <laughs> left handed and then people would say wager. And then you could be and be like, no, I'll let him use my correct hand. <laughs> well, true, true. So yeah. So I think, you know, we we can try that too try even if you're a righty and you're painting or drawing try it with your left oh my gosh, try it with your left be... hand no yeah try no. painting with your left hand no. you don't have to draw a picture i mean that would be it would just... it would be it wouldn't even be stick okay. figures for me i mean yeah, my... you're you're staying very I'm... stuck there Corinne. that's i know stuck. i'm trying so hard because my right hand is not happy right now my right arm and so i'm really like washing my hair with my left hand only yeah and putting the cream on my face at night with my left hand only. Oh my gosh. It's yeah. so, and putting my cream on my body and my makeup. Oh, yeah. Does so it feel like time. somebody else's hand? Totally. Yeah. So isn't that wild? Every, That's all why the I'm senses. saying the, the handwriting would be a step beyond like the, I'm doing this other stuff and I'm experiencing it. Yeah. But that's yeah. exactly right, Eddie, calling me out. That's why you, we have good friends like that because we're, we're stuck in areas that we don't even realize. Like I'm, I'm a good cook, but I'm not a good baker. Like I let that go a long time ago yeah. because I try to practice what I preach and, you know, I, and I, I actually love baking now, especially the doing the keto stuff and the low carbs yes. things like it's you're a, you're a great baker i i love your baked goods it's uh, they're awesome yeah we've come yeah. a long way with our baking we yeah we we say things like that all the time oh yeah. 
you know, people who've sang and they go, oh yeah, I'm okay. You know, there's better, but there's worse. You know, if I love this saying, if the, the, the only birds that sang in the forest were the excellent ones, it'd be an awfully quiet forest. <laughs> Isn't that a good one? Yeah, that's awesome. A lot of squawking going on in that forest. <laughs> and then it's okay. You know, it's like, try singing and try, try different things, pause and go, what am I interested in? What have I said no to and can change even with travel or, you know, yeah. Yeah. That Jim Carrey movie that, um, yes, I think it's called yes, or yes, I can, or yes, movie, uh, mm -hmm. old movie. And that was when he, he was, he was always saying no all the time in his life. That was the yes man. Yeah. The yes man. Thank you. That's really funny. And then when he decided he was going to say yes to everything, yeah. I mean, there's something to be said about that. And because we do, and as we get older, what happens is your frontal lobe starts to shrink after 50. Mm -hmm. And your frontal lobe is your critical thinking, your creative thinking. And, and if that starts to shrink, that that's why older people are sort of known as being set in their ways and even a little bit curmudgeon -y and not wanting to learn new things. Like, I, I can't tell you, like my mom, you know, my mom, how amazing she is. She's going to be 84 in November. And she's traveled the world twice by herself has, you know, just, she's just, you know, my friends all through my ages were, they loved her. She was wearing leather mini skirts up until, you know, a few years ago and she could still rock it. And she, her mantra and my sister and I are constantly like, she's constantly saying, well, because her memory is not so good now, her short-term memory. Right. And so she, was a little bit, you know, it's been happening slowly for like four or five years now, but very slowly. And we remind her of that it's, she, it could have been so much worse and she still lives alone in independent living. But every time, you know, we'll say, you know, let's go somewhere. She's like, well, I don't know. I don't like, you know, me and new things. I don't like doing new things. And me, me and my sister are like, no, you got to, you, you know, right. can't, even though it's her brain that's changing and we understand she's nervous. We sort of talk her through instead of that being just her go-to it's mm -hmm. like okay let's dissect that we wanted to take her to um beautiful the carol king musical in vancouver and mm. i my sister and i really wanted to see it we knew mom would love it because mom loves carol king and when we started talking about it in the car one day when we were we picked her up at her home and we we're going back to play cards at my sister's house and she's like well, I don't know, you know, I don't like new things. And my sister just is like, okay, well, you love Carol King. You love musicals. You're going to be with us and just kind of talked her, her through those things. And, and that, you know, you want to do prevention as we get older. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we, we don't want to get a lazy brain, lazy mind, you know, just not challenged, you know, cause that's, it's, it's, it's dulling, it's dulling to the senses, you know, even trying different foods, you know, they kind of get stuck and go, no, I don't know if I want that. I don't like that. And, you know, it's interesting. Um, Strat and I, my honey and I took um, his mom out for dinner and took her for Thai food. And she's like, well, I don't know. That stuff's kind of spicy now, isn't it? But we got there and she ate the whole thing. Like she she ate it and she was said, I need more water. And she drank the water and we just loved it because she did it. And I was like, you know, you don't have to eat it. If it's too spicy, she goes, oh, I'm not wasting food. <laughs> How old is she again? 90. Yeah. It's 90 amazing. years old. Yeah. yeah you got to push them sometimes, you know, the older yeah. people. And we're happy to gently give them a push. And by the way, my mom and I mean, we had the most amazing time when we drove into Vancouver and went for a beautiful vegan meal and then went to the place. She loved it. She loved every minute of yeah, it. That's great. My mom, I remember when she would fly down when I lived in Nashville for a while and I'd fly her down and she, she would go anywhere and eat anything, you know, and it was great. That's how my, you know, that's how my mom was always. Yes, your mom was always like that. I didn't think my mom was going to be like that, but she, you know, she is. And now she's making fish cakes for a CBC special and they want to film or making a blueberry duff, which is a big uh, ordeal up here. And she already, she's right. Delighted. My mom's 88 and she's right. Delighted. Cause last year she, her picture was up uh, for this gal, uh, 
this family friend, Lori, who's a forager up here, who's amazing. And she did a TED talk. And of course, she's talking about my mom. And here she blasts this great big screen picture of my mother. And my mom like, you know, you know, that TED talk stuff. I was on that. <laughs> mutter. We call her TED mutter. Talk? Mutter. When Your did you do a TED name. talk? Yes, they, they talked about me making my fish cakes and... It was so and funny. her cod, her we made out of cod, right? Her cod yes. fish are like the best. I asked you for the recipe the other day because I've got some cod that I need to cook. Yes. Uh, and how beautiful because here she is now. She's got to, I, I called her yesterday. What are you doing? She said, I'm making 40 fish cakes for Lori for her special that she's doing. And I said, 40? She said, oh, yes, I'm going to make them a little small. You know, kind of like a little bit bigger than a Timbit. <laughs> cute is she how cute know. is she and she's had nine lives that woman she has oh. come through so many things amazing amazing and and that's another beautiful thing about staying you know you can get stuck in your thoughts because you know i'm talking to her one day and she goes old oh, is getting old and and there's always complaining and i'm this wrong and that wrong and i said but mom you got to think about all the other things instead of those, you know, complaints you got. You've had those complaints <laughs> for 50 years. <laughs> oh, that's not very nice, she says. I was like, well, you have. So I said, just, you know, if the right foot hurts, think about your left one. <laughs> <laughs> I could just see you saying that to her. Yeah, yeah and I think yeah. we're, it, it's, you know, that's the important thing about having friends that kind of call you out on things because, it sneaks up on you because you think you're open to new things and trying new things. Mm. But then if you have a friend that says, you know, it, 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 it's, it sneaks up on you how stuck in habits and habitual things and the way of doing things and where you like to go. And, and you're only doing yourself a disservice as you get older, mm. because you're going to, it's going to get, your world is going to get smaller and smaller. And, and if you want it smaller and smaller, that's okay. You know, some people don't want to expand their, their life, but if you want to be healthy as you get older and have a healthy mind and have a healthy body and be engaged with your kids and your grandkids and be engaged in the world and feel useful yourself, mm -hmm. then you have to push yourself. I always use the example of a muscle, like when you're working out with weights, it hurts. Mm -hmm. It's not that enjoyable when you, when you push yourself and it even hurts afterwards, the muscle, you have to break the muscle fibers for it to build back strong again. Then that we were going to talk about self-awareness too. Because, I mean, I think every, every time to me, self-awareness is really key, you know, and that's really just means looking at yourself and mm -hmm. how you're conditioned in your life, because we come in as these little babies and we're mm -hmm. a clean slate. Yep. And everything we learn, it's like a computer being programmed. Yes. Right? We're programmed. Mm -hmm. And then I think, and then in your 20s, hopefully you become more self aware and realize how programmed, like your political thoughts or your parents and your, you know, the way you look at the world is the way your friends look at the world. And mm -hmm. there are, and I think that's part of the divisiveness in the world right now is. Because everybody, you know, even the algorithms on YouTube and stuff is like, they're going to give us what we like and mm -hmm. what we believe. And so you have to push yourself to look at things in a different way and to see things in a different way. Mm -hmm. And to, you know, yeah, have the, when you have those um, identification with like, I'm a, um, I'm a kind person or I'm a, um, like, is it, I'm, I'm not an athlete at all. Like that would be one that I, you know, I am not an athlete, <laughs> but I love yoga, yoga and I love hiking and, mm -hmm. and I have to push myself because I don't love exercise, but I do love yoga and hiking and other things. So I've tried to push myself to go beyond, you know, and even I would be open when my arm heals to maybe learn some pickleball. Yes. I think you might enjoy it. You never know. It's so funny because when we were out um, doing our little walkabout in Nashville a few months ago, there was a pickleball game going on in, in the Nashville mall. in the mall. And I went, Quinn, I wonder if they'll let me play. She's like, you don't want to play pickleball now. You don't have the right shoes. And I'm like, oh, I just, I just want to just play for a second. And it was so fun. 
had to videotape you. Well, it makes you feel really, you know, I don't know when you're active and you're doing things and, and these were young kids, they're playing and you engage with them. You know, you're not getting stuck in your ways. You're not, you can hold yourself back and be inhibited. Oh, they're, they don't want the old woman going in. And I'm like, I'm not an old woman. I know how to play pickleball. And then I go in, I'm like, you know, I won a tournament one time in Canada. They're like, yeah, you play pickleball, you know, and they're excited. And then they gave me the racket and I jumped in and played for, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, and it was fun. Was awesome. yeah. It was fun. Because yeah. one day, you know, one day we won't be able to do that. One mm -hmm. day we don't want to jump on a plane and, and go because the traveling is hard. And I hear that from 90 year olds. They're like, oh, like even in the family, they're going, oh, I've traveled my last, you know, my last trip now. I just don't want to do it anymore. I don't have the strength in my legs or in my back or they just don't want to do it. They want so, to, which is fine. Yes. And sometimes that's not being stuck. That's just like, you know, I've done it. I've been to some of yeah. these places you've been to. And now I just want to just kind of pause and relax and, and just be, mm -hmm. and we're not there yet. So we don't know, but we do know, you know, as we watch younger friends and acquaintances, and now, you know, my grandkids and you get to experience them too. We watch their awareness and their self-awareness, you know, it's a, uh, even what I say to them, I'm aware. And I don't just say it because I, I have to also be aware that these children are my daughters. And I can't just say what my belief systems are. I need to, I can say them, but sometimes I have to, you know, maybe you might have to filter every now and again and wait. It's like, man, you should have seen our discussion or heard our discussion around the Barbie movie. With the daughter or with? No, with the kids. And it was like, oh my gosh, it was so fun. But that's that's for a total, you know, another podcast talking about movies. And that'd be a good one, wouldn't it? Yeah, the, the, the whole, movies. the Barbie movies. It's got a lot of topics in there. That one, you've got to see it first though. I do. I haven't, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Yeah. So I will. But yeah, the self-awareness thing, you know, it, it's. What's your definition of self-awareness, Ed? Um, knowing yourself, what your beliefs are, inquiry, looking at who you think you are, who you want to become, having the, the wherewithal, you know, around yourself yep. and, um, acceptance. So it's just mm, awareness. acceptance of, but I, I have, I mean, yes. Acceptance of self. What is yours? What is yours? Yeah, no, no, no. I, well, we have a short podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, everybody's saying they want longer. Isn't we still have another 15 minutes yet. It's over. or 10 minutes. Like being aware of being aware, I guess, is what I'm interested in. So how many times do we put away the dishes and what, brush our teeth or wash our face and do things or drive somewhere and we're, we have, we're not, don't even remember going there. Right. Mm -hmm. So to mm -hmm. me, being self-aware and aware of awareness is noticing and being consciously aware, especially when you're doing habitual things. Yes. And yes. that's, that's a whole nother sort of level. Like what you're talking about, I think super important in the world being self-aware and noticing that you are conditioned and you can change that. Um, knowing that you, um, yeah, just know that you have autonomy over yourself, your beliefs, you know, you're not Pavlov's yeah. dog. Well, it's even the self-awareness around, you know, what triggers somebody. So when, when people get to become aware of even a trigger, whether it's an emotion or a noise or a sound or a, there's, there's another level of awareness of self around that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, it's being, being aware that you have a choice of if you're reactive or not, you have a choice about your belief systems. You have a choice about your, I, how much I, you identify with the roles that you play, you know, because we, mm -hmm. we are, you know, almost like actors in a play playing different roles. But if there was an actor that got stuck 
in a one role that they played, then they wouldn't be able to do anything else. So we're, we're mothers and daughters and friends and community members, and we're all of that and not being sort of stuck in any mm -hmm. one way. Well, there's, I remember years ago when I studied psychology, we were looking at self-realization, self-acceptance or acceptance, self-actualization, you know, and then, and now with what we've done in our lives, there's an awareness beyond the awareness. Yes. Yeah. Being aware of being aware. It's another step. So it's there's another, not just, yeah. 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 And if you had said that to me 20 years ago, I would look at you like, huh? And, or 30 years ago, 40 years ago, and even now at this age, present moment, there's still an, an evolving awareness around that awareness. Um, you know, yeah. it's almost like a, whoa, it's like a layering, but it's a so hard what, one to explain. Yeah, it is. And it's, indiv it's so individual. There's, it's mm -hmm. just like, you know, we're all having a different experience and, when we say things, it's never going to really be, especially when we talk about this stuff, it's not going to be received in the way that we're even formulating it in our mind, you know, but what mm -hmm. I've been, and I don't know if this makes any sense at all, but what I've been thinking about even the last couple of weeks a lot about is that the present moment and understanding the present moment has deepened and in both intellectually and experientially mm -hmm. so much over the years. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I agree. I agree that the present moment, you know, it's the, it's the only true real. It's, yes, it's the only not, reality that exists is the, is right now. now in this moment, you know, yeah. as I'm walking today on the field with my grandson, he says he had this little chain on his little shirt, his basketball shirt. And he goes, I think those guys over there are staring at me. I was like, why are they staring at you? Do they think you're really cool? He goes, no, I think they're talking about me. And I'm like, why would they be talking about you? He said, I oh, know because of my shirt or my chain. I'm like, well, what does it matter that they're talking about you? Do you feel good wearing what you have on? And he goes, yeah. I said, but they don't even know you. So why would you let what they're saying to you bother you? He goes, hmm, I never thought of that. I said, okay, well, next time try and think about that. He goes, okay, <laughs> that was it. Oh. And on we go. And then it's gone to, oh, look how fast the river's flowing today. You know, it's, yeah. It's beautiful. Because you friend. only have those moments. And, and you know, it's, I don't want to always have it as a teaching moment. I, I, but there's that you, awareness piece. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're so good. I mean, Eddie, you've always been amazing with kids. Like you're just like, like, I don't know the, the greatest like TV little, um, you know, you could have had a TV show with kids, you yeah. know, just amazing with all children. You're my, that's why we always used to say that your my mom should have been your mom because my mom too is a baby whisperer and a kid whisperer, and because uh, you have so much fun. But then you add that in there, so you you're really fun and mm -hmm. playful. But then when there's moments like that, you you slide yeah. it in there without, and it's like adding sugar to the bitter pill or something. It's yeah. like yeah. yeah, well, it's it's fun. They're they're wonderful, you know. Yeah. Kids are great and they're, they're teachers. They teach me every day. So, you know, and I'm sure the kids in India, you know, they teach you when you're talking to them, you know, every day, every day. Yeah, it's awesome. And kids are not stuck. No. Kids are constantly learning new things and they, their emotions are so all over the place. And it's like, it's like, I hate my best friend. And then 10 minutes later, they're like, you want to, I want to go out and ask my best friend to play. It's like, they're, they're so in the moment that they're like, they forget you know, and that's what we do is like, as humans, we, when something works for us, we're like, we want to, we want to hold on to it. Mm -hmm. We want to hold on to belief systems and ways of doing things. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, that's what my biggest challenge is as a life coach is to help people get unstuck themselves yeah. because we, when we find something and it's like, we're, we're these amazing beings, you know, that are more than our thoughts, feelings, emotions, you know, humans, like we're more than that. And, and we're constantly searching like for permanence. Mm -hmm. And the only thing in life that we can be sure of is change. Absolutely. I mean, that's it. And, and so 
that was one of the biggest realizations for me when I started meditating years ago. It's like, I, I would, I could see myself searching, you know, whether it was in a relationship or to be a singer, I was searching for some kind of permanence in my life, like a permanent relationship or so. And, and, and it's like the permanence that we're looking for is actually looking through our eyes. Mm -hmm. And that's a hard one for people to get. Because the awareness looking through your eyes is the same awareness as when you were a baby. Your thoughts and feelings and emotions have changed. Your body's changed. Your hair has grown. Your friends have changed. But that awareness looking through your eyes has never, ever changed. That screen of consciousness looking through your eyes, that's the same when you close your eyes at night. But we're, it's like the blue sky with the clouds. The blue sky is always there. Always. That's the permanence that we're seeking. But that, you know, that took me a long time to get. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a lot of times it's the, the emotions, you know, that that's get people stuck fear. Yeah. Fear that wanting, that grasping of change. Of the, mm -hmm. Yeah. Fear of change. And, you know, we even were talking about how, you know, even like the desire to have a relationship and get married, it's, it's one, oh, one of the most wonderful things in the world is love. It, it truly is. I mean, human beings, I remember at the beginning of Eat, Pray, Love, what she talked about. Um, do you remember that story when she she said, you know, when people are coming across uh, over the water, say they've, they've been coming from Cuba and they've been stuck in the ocean for 21 days and they're going through all this trauma and they come over and their they're, they're, thing that they want to talk most about is mm. who was in love with who. Yeah. Not about the trauma and the home that they left, but who is in love with uh, who, and what relationship is working. Wow. And so there's beautiful thing, but to, to, to want a relationship out of experiencing and sharing that joy, not out of trying for permanence mm -hmm. and yes. to lock something in yes, kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like, and, and I feel like COVID taught us that it, it's like yesterday, all of a sudden tomorrow and today didn't look like yesterday was for the first time in a, a generation or two. And it was global. And it was it global. Was, this, this, you know, affected everyone globally. So, and there's lots of, you know, very, very, a lot of uh, variable views, <laughs> ever changing opinions and amazing information. And you just, you take it in and, you know, people have their own belief systems in place and and sometimes even becoming unstuck from that just going okay well maybe I should listen to that or listen to this but again it's yeah that's a whole other podcast <laughs> yeah but the mm. best way is just is self-inquiry self-awareness look where you're stuck look what things you've done for a lot of years and can you do things differently? Yeah. Well, some people call themselves procrastinators. They go, oh, I just, I, I'll get to it. I'll get, well, start by not calling yourself a procrastinator. Yeah. Cause you know, we, the, you know, I, I truly feel our body, minds, hair, everything we speak. And when we say, you know, I can do that. I'm going to try something new. Even saying it out loud, I can, I'm going to eat that food. I'm going to try that that week. I'm going to make a change. I'm going to just saying it out loud. You don't even have yeah. to say it to anybody, just yeah. yourself. That's even self-awareness. Yeah. 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 And it'll help you get unstuck. Yeah. So, you know, your friends are a great reflection. Yourself and your self-awareness is, is great. We, we all need a village. We all need a tribe. Mm -hmm. You know, we need each other. And so hopefully um, listening to us, hopefully you have a beautiful tribe or you're reaching out to try to create or you're reaching out to your old tribe that you haven't connected to in a while and you have people around you. Yeah. Help. It's never, it's never too late. It's never too late for anything, for anything. Change is good. Yeah. Start Be where the you change. are. Be the change you want to see in the world. That's right. Absolutely. That's Gandhi. I think mm -hmm. that's Gandhi. Yeah. Yeah. That or Nelson Mandela. It's not a idiotism. It's not an eddyism, but you not an eddyism. <laughs> but I have a lot of them. They'll be you do. I'm sure they'll be. Yeah, they just come in and come out. <laughs> so right. yeah. Well, there's another deep dive, Ed. It's a great one. 
beautiful. Until we meet again, stay well, be well, be kind, be yourself, be you, be you.